So considering that it is December, every single week now feels like a nice little extra gift for the Chainsaw Man experience. The anime has been nothing but brilliant and this episode in particular is really fun. It embodies a lot of different themes and emotions and really pushes the story in a very unpredictable way. Firstly, you just witness the death of Himeno, which honestly kind of comes out of nowhere for a lot of people and you don't really see it building up to it. It kind of just happens. It's shocking, it's sad and really puts the story of Chainsaw Man into perspective that this can happen at any point as death is just another part of the story. But then another thing that shocks people is Kobeni. Brilliant, beautiful, intelligent woman that she is, absolutely showing off and still to this day we don't know what she is capable of fully. This is a very rare experience and you're watching it in the glorious mapper animation that they have gifted us and they've done a phenomenal job. They didn't hold back. Now I would like to say that it also maybe plays a little bit more into revealing the identity of what devil she is actually contracted with because a big focus on her appearance, her eyes, her uh, kind of attitude towards the situation is a lot more focused in on compared to the manga and that's just the differences between animation and manga in general. So I wonder, and this is just curiosity speaking, if there's a little bit more here that we can actually theory craft with. I'm not going to do that here but maybe I might make a separate video just specifically for Kobeni. She's a very mysterious woman but we all love her for her and now a lot of you hopefully see the vision for her. She is definitely not weak by any means means, yet she is an anxious individual, and that's putting it lightly. The last thing that really throws people off and kind of has the most spotlight or attention within this episode is Makima. This is meant to raise probably the most questions throughout the entire story uh, for a lot of people, as not only is it a turning point for the narrative, but also a turning point for Makima. You're starting to see more of her true nature, her abilities, what she's capable of, and why she is so incredibly scary. This is someone that is so cold face yet calculated, and true truly does not hold back in any regard and you see the glorious disgusting power that she brings forward and again they've done a phenomenal job. So where do we start? I really enjoyed the opening encounter between Katana Man and Chainsaw Man. Even though you don't really see all too much of it, a lot of it's off screen or uh, kind of just them clashing back and forth, the introduction to it I think is really nice. It's very cinematic and grand and there's a lot of speech on either side and really ramps up the situation exponentially. It does a lot to bring your attention away from the sadness and the tragedy of Aki and Hermeno, but yet it still lingers slightly. Because you see Aki, you see his reaction, they even recap over the Hermeno stuff just to drive it home even more. Quite a twisted sense of humour that Mapa has, but it's a harsh reality and it's going to leave a lingering impact on Aki and how he chooses to approach situations from here on forward. I say this kind of every single week, but Aki is a pivotal character within this story. He kind of harbours a lot of the emotional connections for all of these individuals and when you have people like Denji and Power who have the mental and emotional maturity of children for completely different reasons, when they start to grow and expand and involve each other within their everyday life, it's very beautiful. It's natural, they feel like a genuine family and it's all the more heartbreaking when you see that pillar of emotional connection being Aki start to crumble but also start to change. I would say that Aki has some of the most beautifully human uh, development within this story with what he's gone through personally, the trauma, the experiences, everything kind of builds up to create the hard-shelled individual that he is but the people that break him apart are Denji and Power to show him a different side of compassion. It's nice but also saddening at the exact same time. The Katana Man and Denji fight doesn't last too long. You get to see a little bit of the clash but ultimately the Snake Woman and a couple of uh, normal humans wielding guns come in to mess Denji up and they do it pretty easily. He tries to put up a fight but ultimately he's still in a pretty bad condition. This is where the episode changes. We cut over to Makima. We just watched her get shot very brutally and now she's back. And this scene specifically I think they've done justice. I don't think it has the same vibe as the manga obviously but within its own way it's very ominous and a good reason for this is that when it's within motion and they actually cut away you see someone reacting to Makima returning with her just standing in the background menacingly. You're kind of caught up within your own head. How is she alive? How is this possible? What is she about to do to this person? And while you're asking yourself all of these questions, the person that turns around and notices her is shocked as well. And then it completely cuts away from that. I love this approach. Yes, they could have played this out. They could have filled in the blank. They could have creatively added some sort of connection to the next part of the story. But I like the uneasiness that it provides you and that it ultimately leaves you with. Because when she rocks up to the station, she's perfectly fine. All the people that were trying to escape have 
have been devoured, obliterated, no mercy whatsoever, and you get to see the damage that she's caused, and it is brutal. She did not hold back. Everyone is kind of confused about this situation, including yourself. They reported in that Makima was dead, but then she claims that she wasn't shot, and then you see the carnage that she left behind, and it makes you ask more questions, so you're just as confused as all these people witnessing her walking out of the train alive. This is a brilliant tactic. Add this with the music that they go for, the very eerie voice acting that Makima does. It's a brilliant combination that just enhances things overall very well. But it doesn't stop here. This is where you get to see the brutality of Makima. The fact that she will not hold back even though she is so far away from the action. But it doesn't happen instantly. They actually build up towards it which kind of creates this very nervous amalgamation that's building. You know she's planning something. You know that something is within motion. Yet you don't know how catastrophic it's going to be. And with what you just seen, you expect the worst. And you definitely get it. Before we get there, one person changes the whole outcome of this battle. While Makima is kind of the leading hand for it to cause a lot of the damage and destruction across the city, the one that actually saves Denji from being put into a van and kidnapped is none other than Kobeni. But she's not the same, is she? She's not the outlandish, crying, nervously breaking down individual that was trying to kill Denji only a couple episodes prior. She's quiet now and straightforward and ready to kill everyone within her sight. Now naturally I wouldn't be surprised if you thought well Kobeni's not really going to put up much of a fight especially against Katana Man even though he's injured as well as these other people with the guns and the snake woman. Not the case whatsoever. Kobeni is what I would call an anomaly within the story. We know nothing about her. We don't know what devil she is contracted with and what she's truly capable of but the slight amount that you get from this altercation is a good indicator that she is a lot more powerful powerful than what she puts on. So she gets attacked by a lot of people, initially by the snake woman, and she only has a blade, yet she manages to close the distance extremely quickly, dodge all of the attacks, not take any bullets, no scratches, scars, whatever it may be whatsoever, kills a couple of henchmen, takes their gun, shoots Katana Man, tries to shoot the snake woman, basically rips Denji away from them, and pushes herself back to the wall. She has done all of this in like the span of a minute, if not 30 seconds. And originally, a lot of people were making fun of her for being the nervous individual she is. Now look at her, controlling the scene, going up against powerful people, albeit rather injured. This pretty much gives Makima full control of the situation. You see that her preparations are set. She's up on top of a mountain with altitude, she's with a shrine, she has a bunch of prisoners, and she's ready to sacrifice them. And she goes to work, completely annihilating people one by one with pinpoint accuracy, where there's no collateral damage whatsoever. And and only the people that she wants to kill get killed. They get annihilated, to put simply. Not a scrap of them remain. I love how they handled this scene. I was curious on what they were going to do in comparison to the manga. How do you add movement to such a powerful moment? Do you have them being crushed or squeezed to death or evaporated? What is the perfect operation to showcase all of this? One of my favorite moments from this episode, it's very small, very tiny, right? Is a henchman, or two henchmen, I should say noticing something within the sky. They look up and they feel the presence of something and they know it is wrong. They know it's bad. They know that death is around the corner for them and they start panicking. I think this is the perfect capture of emotion and mysteriousness and just unknown towards Makima and the sheer monstrosity of power that she actually can produce. Because within instants, within seconds, everyone is getting annihilated from the face of the earth. They've done a beautiful job and they even show a lot of love to the sacrificial scene as well up with the shrine. They don't spare no expenses. They show her moving her hands and doing all of these gestures and really making it very intimate and personal in a way. I think this focus builds a really nice response for yourself towards Makima. Because ask yourself now, how do you feel about her? Are you scared of her? Are you unsure about her? Do you think she can be even more powerful? What do you think she's truly capable of? Why do you think so many people are scared of her? What do you think her true intentions are? All of these questions that you may find yourself asking is what this episode produces and it's absolutely stunning. I really appreciate the way that they ended this episode with Kobeni. See her break apart. She becomes nervous. She starts crying. She starts getting incoherent in a lot of ways and it's definitely a very overwhelming moment but I think this showcases a lot of vulnerability that Kobeni has. That even though she can be this powerful she's still human at the end of the day. She still values her friends, her life and this isn't the job that she wants. 
She even talks about going back to Jimeno and resigning after this, which is just another punch in the gut with everything that happened. Overall, I thought they'd done this episode extremely well. They built the tension nicely, have beautiful music surrounding it. Uh, the atmosphere towards Makima is very unnerving and Kobeni is just out here demolishing people with ease, which is surprising but super fun at the exact same time. It's still very much emotional with the lingering feelings and especially with the ending. They want to make sure that you know that Hemono died a pretty brutal death pretty much for no reason and that it's going to affect a lot of people. And I'm going to be honest, as simplistic as that ending was with some very lovely music by Aima, I believe her name is, whoever animated it, whatever team, whatever group, everyone put their soul into that. There was so much fluidity and finesse, even though it wasn't really showcasing all too much and more so just the movement of blood and strings and this and that kind of connecting to one another. There is times where you see individuals framed in such a glorious and creative light and I absolutely love it. I think they've done a phenomenal job with that ending. However, I want to know your thoughts right now. Let me know. Thank you.